uh, Sebastian is my name. Uh, I work uh, at Squid. Um, so I was asked to come and talk about the most pretentious slide title I've ever had, I think, uh, The Art of Code Review. It makes me into a master, I guess, on code reviewing. Uh, so before I get started, just so that I know, how many of you uh, are actively reviewing code uh, in your daily work? This is fantastic. I'm not the only expert in the room. <laughs> Uh, so, yes, my train leaves at uh, 2029, so I won't join for beer, but uh, uh, I will attempt to, like, because this, is, this can be, be an inflammatory uh, talk, <laughs> because uh, I think most people won't agree with everything I say. Uh, so, discussions uh, could be done, preferably during, uh, uh, over a beer <laughs> or something. So a short intro, who I am and what I've done during my development life or as a developer. I know that the talk was supposed to be in, uh, in Swedish, but since the other, one, uh, other presenters had it in English, I thought, why not? I could probably attempt to do that as well. Uh, so I worked at like Fjällinjen. Uh, it's a toll gate uh, invoice uh, sending thing in Norway, where if you go to Oslo, they will give you an invoice saying, uh, pay for our roads, uh, and when I got there, I was tasked with create their uh, IT department because they didn't have any. So, uh, as a developer, I of course started writing a Java application, uh, and then in Sparabank One, which is the biggest bank alliance, it's an alliance but uh, of several banks, uh, I was writing Java uh, applications and also lots of JavaScript applications and Flash applications. Uh, and then VG, uh, which is an or another Norwegian uh, big company, which is the most popular newspaper, uh, which has a technology stack of mainly PHP and JavaScript and uh, a lot of other technologies that they found, uh, find, found that it was fun to use. And I agree with them. It was a really good time <laughs> to work there as well. Uh, then there was Cuddle as Norwegian startup. It's a safe uh, social media for your kids app. So basically, it's like Instagram for kids below the age of 13, where they have a content moderated uh, platform where they can uh, learn how to use social medias. It's a really good idea. Unfortunately, they used uh, a, beer, a, a bear that looks very close to the old famous pedo bear. And with the name Cuddle, it became a honeypot for creepy men. Uh, so they have changed their name and their logo. Uh, but I was working there, and uh, mainly a very big backend stack, with I, which I had to reverse engineer in the Amazon, because uh, for some reason they found it good to fire the whole IT department in Poland, and all of them had all the credentials for the whole uh, AWS stack. So uh, happy reverse engineering at 0401, uh, <laughs> yakking into the MongoDB replication. Yay! <laughs> But it was fun. Then I worked at King, uh, Candy Crush, <laughs> uh, and uh, a lot of other stuff, because at King they, they have uh, both uh, uh, their own game platforms, they, uh, they have uh, uh, their own development tools, they have their tracking, and I was mainly focusing on uh, tracking the Kafka stream uh, using Apache Flink and creating like tools on top of that so that we can, for instance, load a new level in Candy Crush with one million fake AI players and just see if this new level is more difficult or easier than the previous one. And then now I'm working at Klarna uh, and then specifically the Klarna checkout. Uh, so, and that's also very fun, but yet again, another huge code base where I get to, like, that's probably my, my work description. I start working at a company and my, I'm tasked with rewriting a lot of code. <laughs> uh, and I'm not, like, super proficient as a Java developer, so I've done, like, 
good slides <laughs> for, from the first pr uh, presentation. I'm definitely not a good PHP developer, but now I'm a contributor to PHP, unfortunately. <laughs> uh, and uh, I'm not a brilliant JavaScript developer either, but like, and so that's, I, th I thought that how can I manage to do my job? And it's mainly because I strongly believe that code reviews is an integral part of uh, how to like bridge gaps between like understanding both the business and also how other uh, developers like domain knowledge about the code base and this so, such. So uh, yes, usually when we talk, I don't know if this is large enough, but I will read it. <laughs> uh, what we value with code reviews is mainly finding defects. Like someone might spot an edge case you haven't. Someone might know something you don't. Someone might spot a test case you haven't covered. It's also about code improvements and like keeping a code standard <laughs> so that it's like a, a, homo a, a homogeneous, 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 thank you, <laughs> uh, uh, code base. So someone might have an alternative idea to your solution, or someone might just be straight out more amazing than you, or someone might find your code does not adhere to code standards. There's also alternative solutions, which is valuable, because like the way I s decided to solve something, uh, it might not, there, there might be an alternative. Like someone might, might have more domain knowledge. They're like, yeah, but, Cool stuff, bro. But what? Why didn't you use this instead? We we already built this. And like, okay, my bad. Thanks. Uh, someone might know a Ninja trick framework feature you don't, especially in the JavaScript community. <laughs> uh, someone might have a complete different approach to the problem, and that's really fun because that's when like that's 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 the fun part for me. I really like solutions. So. And knowledge transfers, of course, <laughs> communicate through code, op uh, like opinions or facts, it doesn't really matter. It's all about alignment in the teams you have. Uh, and like surface areas between the division in the teams. And uh, pull request discussions can be a very powerful tool during on onboarding. And uh, both King and Klarna are currently hiring in, uh, in a very aggressive pace, so it's like, I think, since I started at Klarna one year ago, my whole team has been uh, replaced, or like, <laughs> every, like, all the developers has left, and now we have a whole new set of developers on board. Uh, so it's really nice to, like, the first couple of days to go back and just look at what has been done during the last month, uh, and look through our pull request, everything that's merged, and like that. Uh, so, I should also mention, I studied mas a master's degree in education to begin with, and combined it with a master in engineering, so that's why I really like the soft and fluffy stuff. <laughs> but, the studies, however, in regards to pull requests or code reviews, they show that you can detect bugs, you can save money, and it will improve communication, and it's probably true. Uh, I mean, yeah, I can't argue against it. It's a study, he says it, so cool. Uh, but I don't have reference to, this, to these studies because, because I just jotted them down during a couple of years. <laughs> so I'm, I, I have some yeah, at other slides. But however, when I started, like before I got really into uh, code reviews, I thought them extremely scary. Uh, it was mainly because at the time I was working at a company and if you had a bug that went out into production, you got a pink cap that said, I fucked up. And you needed to wear that cap until the next person uh, fucked up. <laughs> Sorry for the language. Uh, but like, and that was the, like, uh, company culture. So when I started out, I was like, I don't want them to see my code. It's better if they don't. <laughs> uh, so because I thought they were like, it's easy for it to be confrontational. Like I'm, I'm uh, at that point, I was uh, what do you call them? Um, uh, insecure overachiever, I think is the term. I thought that I will create the golden nugget of code. It can't be. Uh, it can't contain and like it's beyond reproach, <laughs> uh, 
Uh, so that's uh, impossible, so uh, better to hide it from everyone. Uh, it's easy to for formulate a, an opinion which might be interpreted as truth, especially if you encounter someone like me, like one of these insecure overachievers. Uh, so if you say like, oh, haven't you tried to do this? And it's like, okay, I will do that. Uh, but it's also like the emotional, uh, the emotional aspect, like, am I not good enough? Like, I think I'm fairly decent, but am I not good enough? That's horrible. Am I not appreciated? Will I be fired? <laughs> or what am I doing here? Uh, but it's also another aspect. I'd rather them since, since I th uh, thought that they were egotistic. Like, we had the like, debate, tabs, tabs versus spaces and such. And it's like, can't we just determine a code standard? <laughs> I don't care. Uh, and also, like, yeah, like, please, no one touch my code, please. That was my like. That's that's how I felt. Now it's more like I'm. I I have I coded for too much, too long. So now it's like, eh, <laughs> sure. Uh, also, I thought it was extremely expensive because it takes time, and that's like one of the main main parts. I think that uh, a pull request that I got uh, that I need to review it. It's, it requires a context switch for me because it could be in a completely different part of the code base that I'm currently working on. So just switching to that, it takes a lot of time. So I can't, can't just pull do pull requests, uh, a code review of a pull request like all the time because it delays my work and then I look bad because I'm not I'm not producing stuff. Uh, I'm actually just looking what other people are producing. That has to cost a lot. I'm probably getting fired. Um, so that's why I dreaded them. And also, yes, disruptive, yet again, context switching, which is always a very demanding task. And I don't know how many of you have like quiet comfort uh, headphones when you, while you work so that people won't ask you questions. <laughs> but I am <laughs> doing that. Uh, so yeah, so that's like that's uh, that's how I entered into development and how I entered into like uh, code review and these were the things that were actually making me uh, very skeptical, skeptic about making this uh, or starting to actually work with code review and and actually actively working for getting my teams to start doing code reviews. So yeah, basically it felt like. Lot of reviews, no hugs. Um, someone else just comes along and points out all your shortcomings. It's no fun. Uh, so uh, I uh, got this once. Uh, actually, not the red part. <laughs> so it says, this is shitty code. <laughs> it was uh, a Polish developer who gave me this amazing uh, code review. <laughs> And I, of course, added, ah, are you some kind of idiot? And I was like, yeah, great day so far. <laughs> uh, so <laughs> uh, I would probably not have stayed in the profession if it continued on like this. But uh, I had a lot of colleagues where I, where, where I was talking in regards to this problem, where I actually felt like the joy of development was not there anymore. It was like I felt critiqued and bombarded and I did it was no fun uh, so uh, I, I talked to my colleagues and I read up on other developers stories uh, in regards to code reviews and I thought it how and I realized that if I want to make it wor this work I need my team like I, I need to get my team to be like yay let's do code review it's actually good for us but how do you do that uh, well, you should probably know that each team is super unique. I mean, uh, there is no silver bullet. And uh, if you work, as I do in a lot of my work, I uh, like uh, half of my team is in the U.S. Half is in uh, uh, half of them is in uh, Tel Aviv, uh, and uh, another part of them sits in Stockholm. Uh, like, it's still a team but it's, it has a lot of moving parts and there's a culture and language barrier which is difficult to like uh, get, get, uh, get past. So one of the things 
you should probably, if you don't do code reviews today, one thing you should probably do is just uh, ask and discuss your, with your team whether you should do code reviews or not. And uh, also discuss the motivation for why you want to do code reviews. Because if you haven't gotten past that hurdle, then it, like nothing that I'm going to say will actually <laughs> make a difference. Uh, because you have to remember that motivation is not uh, primarily equal to outcome. So uh, if you can just type down the motive, like if you just uh, write down the motivation why you want to do uh, a code review, perfect. Then you can go back and you can look at it like a couple of months later or half a year and see like, is this actually a thing or does it work? Uh, but uh, code review is all about the team and team communication. So the collaboration is the most important part. And uh, I never heard about the Stack Exchange code review. Uh, super exciting. I will have to modify my slides. <laughs> uh, but uh, to make code reviews not being such a big issue, there are s like or time consuming. There are some things you can do before you actually submit uh, your PR for code review or your code for code review. And the first thing is that just think about the re like think from the reviewer's perspective. Uh, do they need? Do they know what I'm trying to achieve? Like if you can just jot down a, like a short description of like what the feature is, or explain why you made it, or suggest a path through the code if it's a like larger thing, uh, it makes it a lot easier because then you take away a lot of the context or the time it takes to like get into the new context for the reviewer and also like did you do a major rework <laughs> like uh, over 400 lines i think a uh, code review should be done on less than 400 lines uh, when you start to get things uh, things that are larger than that it starts to get complicated it's also the thing i'm the suckiest at because yeah i uh, the other week i committed uh, 42,500 lines of code added and removed 67,240 lines of uh, code and removed seven and uh, 751 files um, in one PR in a JavaScript project. Uh, and that code won't get code reviewed. So instead, <laughs> instead of what we did was that, okay, I can't split it because basically what I did, I ripped out the whole build system because we were running on Webpack for bundling everything, but we were running a deprecated Webpack version and we had built a tool around the deprecated Webpack. You're probably familiar with exactly how this works because I've seen it quite a lot of times. Unfortunately, it also, uh, uh, the rest of the code base were solely relying on quirks and features in Webpack the earlier deprecated versions, so I had to, yes, you, I couldn't split it up. Uh, so since I couldn't, what I did was that I had to schedule a joint walkthrough for like 15 minutes where I explained, this is what I've done, I think it works, uh, let's split up like in pairs, two and two, and just go through different parts of the code and see if we can spot anything. Uh, because, like, and that's the only way we can review this. Um, and the reason why I don't think, why I think code review should be done on less than 400, it's because, like, cognitive uh, theory uh, says that there is an actual limit for what we can store in our ma mind. So the less changes, the better the review will be. Uh, also, like, test your code. <laughs> Uh, it uh, it's a very good chance that like all the projects you're working in already have like linters and uh, unit tests and end-to-end -end tests and functional tests and I don't know integration tests. Th there are a lot of tools. Like just use them. It doesn't cost you that much. You can go and take a coffee or start on the next issue. It's <laughs> it's uh, but it makes it easier for the reviewer because he then he might not have to spend time getting into your context, starting your reviewing, and then finding out, oh, this code doesn't even run. Um, so yeah. Uh, there are also, like, from a business perspective, I st shamelessly stole the slide or, or the graphics, but like there are scheduled code review sessions in some companies. 
might be good. I don't know. Uh, I've never experienced it, but it sounds weird. Uh, there are also continuous review sessions, and those are the ones I've been talking about. You get a pull request, and then someone reviews this, and then it gets merged to master or uh, whatever branching system you <laughs> use. Uh, and also the extreme pair prog programming, uh, pair programming sessions. Uh, so in, in extreme, pro uh, extreme programming, pair programming is like, yay, super fun, and it's actually super fun. I will do it tomorrow. Uh, but then. Like, who should you re review your code? <laughs> should it only be the lead developers? Or only the senior developers? Or uh, should your peers, like people on the same level as me, should they develop uh, or review? Or should everyone review? Uh, and I think, like, it's quite self-explanatory. I think that, like, everyone, include, not everyone in the whole team, but include, like, different level of people, and especially, invite the junior developers, like the new guy, to, uh, to actually have a look at and attempt to do a code review, because then you can start a discussion that makes your whole team more aligned. So, yes. <sighs> now we will move on to some of the tips I have, like more practical tips. Uh, basically, it's just practice, fail, practice, succeed, practice, fail perhaps not in that order. It's just, it's iterative work. You will never become the best code reviewer ever, uh, but you will always be better uh, because each code piece, each code is different and each team is different. But uh, you should not ever criticize a person. You should uh, question the code uh, when you uh, review someone's code because uh, Code is basically just an opinion in how you can solve a solution. Uh, there are probably several opinions how you solve a one, uh, how you solve a problem, but uh, how you get there is almost always an opinion. Uh, there are, of course, yeah. And you so should also uh, avoid to select ownership like mine or yours. Uh, so I made my cry example here. I don't know if I like the examples, but <laughs> uh, the cry example is I don't agree with your code. This is suboptimal. Uh, they are using your code, and this is suboptimal. It doesn't give me a clue what to fix. Uh, so I, I just added, are you some kind of idiot? Uh, so what you could do instead is that you could type something like, I'm not sure I understand what this does could, blah, 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 also solve, solve the issue without polluting the context, da, 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 da. That might be a better entry way for the uh, receiver of the code review to actually do some <laughs> actual step or have like more input in how to respond to your, uh, your uh, review. Also, passive aggressive, uh, you remember Cuddle? Uh, where people need training in social media, or children need, because like sarcasm and uh, like expressions, they doesn't really carry that well uh, over internet, and especially not in written form. There are exceptions, of course. Uh, so, yeah, don't be passive aggressive, <laughs> uh, and also always suggest an improve uh, an improvement. Uh, so that if you find something that it's like, okay, uh, I don't like this piece of code. That's my opinion. So uh, I can suggest that could we do this change because it works better in Vim uh, for me. Uh, then perhaps uh, uh, the receiver of the review, it's totally up to them to either reject it, uh, reject it as a change they want to make, or they might be like, okay, fair, if it makes Sebastian's life easier, let's do it. And also, remember to give praise. Uh, I, r uh, I worked on a code base where I converted CoffeeScript uh, to JavaScript, and uh, I, got, uh, I got some praise in that the way where um, a colleague of mine just <laughs> wrote, great work, one down, literally 338 to go. <laughs> We're getting there. <coughs> and like, 
it can be very easy to step into like where where you where you start to see that the code re like the uh, the uh, the review starts to like uh, spiral out of control. There are a lot of opinions, and there are a lot of like it does like it never ends. Like just book a meeting or take the discussion over a beer, uh, and especially if they turn it starts to turn into philosophical or academic uh, discussions, because then it's like yeah. Now we're just dealing with opinions, not necessarily providing. We, we will not find this out through a thread. Just have let's just have a talk. And uh, I don't know about you, but like be yourself when you review. Uh, if you are a person who has the best uh, uh, gifs and uh, uh, emoji library <laughs> or stash, use it. It's fun. Uh, if it if it doesn't feel forced, <laughs> uh, so if you're like me, like a monstrous uh, pedant, uh, like tr you can try to hold back on that part of yourself, <laughs> uh, that would be a good thing. But yes, uh, I think that now I breezed through it quite fast. Uh, so, are there any questions or opinions? <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>